What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Travis. This is TW Motorsports and today, yes, we are doing the free travel mod on the Suburban. Now, um, I've got a majority of the parts for the Suburban to lower it. As you guys know, uh, had somebody send me the back. Uh, so I have all that stuff. I'm waiting on um, a few little things. I need some bump stops. And uh, in the front, uh, actually, I think, I think I have all the front. It's the back. Um, he sent me the springs and the airbags. I'm waiting on the bump stops and I'm waiting on the DJM kit, uh, which I always use when I do these things. So today we're not gonna worry about that. I need to get the old bump stops out of the way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you a step-by-step -step method. I made a video like this in the past, but um, I may not have got as in depth as I think I can. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys start to finish um, how I cut the bump stops out of these and do the free travel mod as they call it because if you lower these things any more than, in my opinion, three inches, so if you go to the four inch mark, three inches you can probably get away with just changing the bump stop out and you'll see it here in a second when we get it off the ground. But when you go to four inches or more, you really, really need to cut off that section of the frame. And it really doesn't go on the frame, it's kind of sandwiched on, which I'll show you guys once we get the wheel off. But let's get started. Like I said, I'm gonna show you guys a step-by-step -step in today's video on how to do the free travel mod, and then we'll have a separate video when I go to lower this thing. But let's go grab the jack. I'm gonna show you guys where I'm gonna put the jack, where I'm gonna put the jack stands. Like I said, I'm gonna to try to be as in-depth as possible so you guys can do this at your house, and I'll show you the method that I use. So the very first thing I did was I chalked the front wheels. Now I'm just using some bricks because, well, it seems like everything at this house is taken apart and I don't have my little rubber wheel chalk. So bricks will work fine. My driveway kind of has a slant, so I just want to keep it from rolling. I have one on the front and one on the back. So four bricks total on the front wheels. And uh, so I'm going to jack up on the center of the differential here. So I've got my jack in place. We're gonna lift this thing up off the ground and we don't have to get it really, really far, just enough to, um, well, actually we're gonna have to get it farther than what I'm telling you guys. We gotta get it enough where when I put the jack stands in, the suspension relax and gives us quite a bit of room. So I'm gonna lift this up and I'll show you guys where I'm gonna place the jack stands. Now that I have it off the ground, probably got at least six inches under the tire. I'm coming up here to where the lower control arm comes to the frame. And the thickest part of the frame here, you'll see it's smaller here and the thicker part, that is where I'm going. So you're gonna need a pretty tall set of, set of jack stands. The shorter ones generally don't work. And no guys, I am not using Harbor Freight jack stands. These are actually AC Delco. So had a couple people in videos worried about me. I appreciate that, but on both sides. So I'm gonna put one here and I'm gonna go grab one and put it on the other side. And then we can go ahead and get the wheel off and relax the suspension. So you can see that is now I let the jack down and is now resting on the jack stand. So I did leave the jack back there, but I have just enough room. You can just see under the tire. I'm gonna go ahead and pop the center cap off with the flat head screwdriver and get this wheel out of the way. And then we'll take a look at what we need to cut. You guys may not be as picky as me, but I generally take a flat head screwdriver and wrap it in a towel and then just pop those loose. Uh, these wheels are in really, really good shape. So I wanna keep them that way and uh, the less you scrape them up, the better. But I believe this is 7 8 I'm gonna go grab my cordless impact. We'll see if we can get these off with it and not my regular impact. So the size is 7 8 and I'm gonna, like I said, attempt to use my cordless. All right, it worked. So we'll get all six of these off and uh, I'm probably gonna do one side at a time. So I'm gonna leave the other wheel on and we'll do it last. Now I am choosing to do the easy side first because the gas tank's not in the way. We'll address that once we get to the other side. But for now, I'll get this out of the way and then we'll talk about where we need to cut. So unlike your leaf spring trucks where you have to notch the frame, you don't have to do that on these. And why they call this the free travel mod is because honestly, it doesn't cost anything to do this. You don't have to buy a C notch or anything like that, but uh, you do have to have some means of cutting this off. So as you can see, the old bump stop is, look at it, it's all torn up. So we can take that out of the way. We will not be reusing that because we're going to cut this entire bucket off. So a couple methods of doing this, guys, and I have a method that I use, several other methods. Sometimes people use a plasma. Sometimes people use a sawzall. The problem I found with that in the past is if you get a little crazy with your sawzall, you're going to come up into your frame. I don't like doing that. So what I do is I literally mark it right here, and I'll just mark it by eye. 
I'm keeping it even with this bottom section and I'm cutting this whole piece off. Now, the downside to that is it goes all the way through. So what I do is I try to cut here and on the back here and then I try to bend it down. But you guys are gonna see me do that. I'm gonna go grab my cutoff wheel and I'm just using a cutoff wheel on my grinder, a four and a half inch or a four inch cutoff wheel on my DeWalt uh, grinder. And I'm cutting this and, uh, but you guys will see that, like I said, but that is where you get the free part of a free travel mod. Now, it is a good idea to unhook this line just so it's out of the way. Um, all, you're, all I'm gonna use is a screwdriver, just a flathead screwdriver to loosen it here. And then I'm gonna pull this piece out of the frame and that gets it out of the way. Hopefully you guys can see where I'm pointing. Yeah, you can. Um, that'll get it out of the way back here where we're not risking cutting through our ABS line. I'll show you how I'm just gonna twist this flathead screwdriver in this clip. Well, I said I was, there we go. Unhook that and then I'm gonna use my little uh, tool to release this off the frame up top here. And if you're super careful, you may not have to do this, but man, it's, they're kind of expensive, the lines are, I mean, for what they are. But you'll also notice this does not have the ride height sensors on it. So generally up here, um, hooked on the upper A-arm or the lower control arm, sorry, um, there would be a rod. And so if you have that, you are going to have to either manipulate that rod um, most of your kits or springs come with that. If not, it's just a piece of all thread that you can get to make a shorter one. But we're not gonna worry about that on this because obviously it doesn't have it. So what I'm gonna do is I kinda take a screwdriver and just crudely mark this. Um, you can kinda see the line that I'm making. I don't wanna go up any higher than this point because then you're in the frame. You can see, uh, and then some people like to cut this entire piece off. I'm not as concerned with like, this section here will still be here. I'm more concerned with the bigger chunk that we wanna take out. So all this here needs to be out of the way. The other thing is I've noticed that it seems like if you cut a relief cut here in the center, which I'll show you as I go on, um, it makes it a little easier to pry down. You're not trying to pry so much at one time, but I'm gonna grab, you can see I've changed shirts. I went to a long sleeve shirt and I have my face shield. I also have my goggles and I have my grinder. Right now it has a grinder disc on it, but I'm gonna put a cutoff wheel. And guys, I will tell you that, I don't know, I've probably got what, 10 discs here. And there's a point when you can only go so far back and so you're gonna make, you may have to change to a bigger one, a thicker one, cause they kind of cut down. You'll end up with, um, well, I'll show you here, end up with one like this size and it won't go all the way through. So you may have to change discs often, but we're gonna start cutting at this point. At this point, I'm gonna start cutting. I have put a smaller one on, uh, one that's worn down a little bit because I don't need to get real deep right here. This will get through that. Where I am gonna have to use a deeper one is when I go back to the back and you'll see, but I'm gonna start here and uh, show you guys what happens.
so at this point you can see it didn't take me long maybe um, three minutes five minutes something like that to get through the front side but uh, we have a lot more to do than that we're gonna have to go down the side here which means I'm gonna have to change over to a you know a bigger disc one that's gonna get up in that area where I need because a lot of it I'm gonna cut from the front here so um, that'll give me more room there same thing on the back side the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be cutting a section right here in the center on the back side of this cup and that'll give me that relief that I need when I go to bend it down Now that we've got the cut down the side and the cut down the other side and the cut in the middle, um, what I do is I take a pry bar, pretty good size pry bar, and uh, we try to get some leverage on it. I may have to go get a smaller one to fit in here, but we're going to try to pry it down so we can see where else we need to cut because there's a lot more to cut. And that's why I put that relief cut in there because if you don't, I've done this in the past without the relief cut and it's just way harder to bend this down when it's all one piece like that. So now you can see what I'm talking about. Now we can get, I'm going to pull it down just a hair further than that. Um, but once we get it down a little further, we can put a bigger disc on and then cut the back side and we don't have to go on to the inside because there's nothing worse than grinding above your head, getting that stuff landing all over you. It's just, I hate doing that. And we would have to take the spring out. Now, if we were doing this all at one time, it may be a little easier. You may be able to get uh, an area where you're not having to lay on the ground and cut, but to me, this is the easiest way. So I've got that bent down as far as I can get it uh, without it hitting something on the inside. So I put a bigger disc on and now we will be able to reach back in there and trim off that back ledge and this piece will be completely gone.
once you get a majority of it cut, you can wiggle it back and forth. And look at that. Look how much more room that gives you. What is that? Probably two inches thick, maybe almost three at the at the base or the biggest part. So um, you can see where you get a majority of your travel. Now I can go back and trim a little closer to the frame on both sides if I wanted to. But what I think I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grind this down flush. But still gotta get this piece off. I need to bend it down really quick and uh, then we'll cut the back a bit. So sometimes I use two, like I said, pry bars to get um, the leverage I need. You get a smaller pry bar that helps get that uh, gap open there. Then you can then you can really go after it with the big one. And the further you bend it down, the better are your chances of reaching the back. That's why I bend it down so far. And if you can get in the center of this, it helps, but this is too big around. So I'm going to cut that off and uh, we'll be finished pretty much with this side other than grinding that flat. So at this point, you can see I just bent that back and forth, um, got it all cut off. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a flap wheel like this guy here, and this one's actually pretty worn out. I may have to go grab another one, but uh, I'm going to take a flap wheel and clean this area up so it's nice and smooth, and then I'll probably spray it with some paint just to keep it from rusting. So you can use undercoating or whatever you want to use. But at this point, we're finished up. Um, I won't show you guys me grinding. There's a couple reasons why I generally don't like to show grinding. For one, it's throwing sparks up against my camera and it just ruins the face of my camera. I've got a couple pits in there. Hopefully you guys can't see it, but um, I don't like doing that. So when I'm grinding, I'm definitely not going to show you guys but all I'm doing is just cleaning up these edges anyway, and uh, then I'll spray it and we'll come back and take a look at it um, once we're all finished up. So at this point, you guys can see that I have it all ground down and I have some paint on it, and uh, it looks way better, obviously, with some paint on it, and I did go a little further than probably what I needed to, but guys, you could spend a ton of time on this. You can spend hours on this. I've seen people heat this. Um, this is kind of like a spot weld from the factory where they kind of heat it up and sandwich it on the frame. You can spend the time and grind all that off, or you can heat it up and chisel it off. But to be quite honest with you, you're going to spend a ton of time and it's not needed. It's just aesthetic. So if you want it to look like it came out that way, yes, you could chisel all that off or grind all that off if you wanted. Um, I've done them in the past and it just takes forever. So I've learned that basically we're looking for the functionality. We're not, nobody looks under this thing. It's not a show car. So. Um, this works, believe me. So got it cut. We are even with the frame. And so I've got it all painted. At this point, guys, we are finished um, on this side. Now, on the other side, because we have to deal with the gas tank, I'm going to basically start filming um, after we get the initial cut, the relief cut in the center. And then I'll kind of talk about what I do to keep from getting in the gas tank because the gas tank is plastic and it is close. 
And uh, if you guys don't feel comfortable, by, by all means, take it to somebody and have them do it. But that's the other thing. If you're cutting with a Sawzall, you can get into the gas tank on the other side. But once we get to the other side, I'll show you what I'm talking about. But for now, this side is finished. I just used some Rust-Oleum Flat Black. It's still kind of damp, but to be honest with you, I like to paint when it's hot because the paint dries a lot quicker and sets up nicer. But we need to put these guys back into place. As a matter of fact, I'm going to probably wait to put that top one in since that paint is still wet. But I'm going to go whip the wheel off the other side, get those first cuts started, and then we'll go over there and talk about what's needed to avoid the tank. So at this point I'm on the driver's side. So the gas tank is right here. And so what I've done guys is I actually got a piece of real, uh, it's not real thin metal, but it's almost like, um, I think I got it off the side of an old computer. And uh, the reason I do this is it gives me a guide to see, you can see where I've gotten close on past ones I've used this on, but um, it gives me a guide to see where I'm cutting. And um, if I get too close, we'll go into this and not the tank because the tank is plastic. So I just wedge that up in there. But other than that, I've done the exact same thing. So I've cut my relief cut. I've got it cut down the side here and a majority of the side here. Now that I've got the metal in, I'm gonna go ahead and cut the rest of the way. But then it's just like the other side. So I'm gonna go ahead, bend it down, trim the back edge off. Now up here, you're not gonna have an issue, but down here is where I get a little nervous as far as getting close to the tank. Another reason why I don't like to use a Sawzall because you will go right into that tank. Same way with the plasma. You're gonna need a way thicker piece of metal here if you're gonna use a plasma to torch this out. Um, that's why I like this method the best. I have more control, less spark, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and finish this up and then I'll give you guys a look um, once we're complete on this side. As you can see at this point, I've got uh, this side all finished and I've got it painted back together, um, everything ground down. I do need to take this out. You can see, like I said, even this time, I got a couple spots here where I was close. So like I said, guys, that is plastic. So be very careful on this side. Um, this metal, you can see, isn't really thick, but it's enough to let you know, and it's a different sound. So when you hit it, you kind of know uh, what's going on but at this point I'm gonna go ahead and put the wheels back on and uh, I think we'll be wrapped up we'll put this thing back on the ground so just in time for it to get dark I have moved this thing around we are all finished up I do have what I cut off um, laying right here including all my discs that I use but the other side guys you know how bad this one looked the other side didn't even have one so I guess it had fallen out now it is okay to ride without it um, when you're not dropped because we're so far away from it we're not gonna chance hitting uh, unless you really load it up the back or put a huge trailer on, you're not going to have any issues. But we are all finished. I did go ahead and torque the wheels down. I always think that's a good idea, guys. Um, as you know, we're not going to lower it in this video. I just wanted to show you guys a more in-depth process of doing the free travel mod. I have made a couple videos on this. But on the newer ones like these, um, unlike my Z71 Tahoe where we only had to cut two sides, this is attached on all four sides. So a little more in-depth to do this. And like I said, hopefully... You guys got some information out of this it's something that you guys can do in your driveway relatively easy but in the next video on this uh, or on the suburban we will be dropping it so hopefully i get those parts in the next couple days and i can get a video out relatively quickly on us slamming this thing and we are going to go pretty low that is why i cut those out obviously we are going to go over three inches in the back that is why i took them out but if it was informative like always guys please smash that thumbs up button if you are not subscribed you got to get subscribed because we have a ton of stuff going on uh tons of projects so while you're down there subscribing make sure you ring that bell icon that notifies you every single time we drop a new video and stay tuned to see what we work on next